Aloha, this is Pipeline Audio. In this video, as part of the Reaper Live Pedalboard project, I'm going to walk you through the creation of four presets suitable for a live guitar rig uh, using Reaper and a script called LBX Stripper. LBX Stripper seems to have been made for a really complicated electronic music or MIDI or something. It has a lot of morphing capabilities and uh, just a lot of stuff, but the thing that stood out for our purposes is that it has a snapshots feature and it can switch extremely fast and uh, give you control over all of your parameters in a really simple way, pretty much like preset switching, except for without the uh, gaps and all the other things that happen when you try and switch a preset live in a digital audio workstation. Previously, we were using SWS Live Configs for this, and there is a lot of overlap, at least in uh, function, between these, but the way they carry them out is quite different. And LBX Stripper is still under active development, and um, the developer is actually easy to get a hold of. I'll be updating the Reaper Live Pedalboard project page soon, uh, as soon as I can, uh, with uh, LBX Stripper, but I'll keep the SWS stuff in an archive page. Now this script is really complicated and uh, I'm kind of going to fumble my way through this. I should have scripted the script out, but I didn't. For the too long didn't read, I'm going to try and post a finished project in the video description. So the point of this video is to end up with uh, a clean patch, a distorted patch, kind of an effecty lead patch with the delay. And that one's going to show spillover, so when you switch back to another patch, the uh, delays will still play out. And for the fourth one, it's going to be a harmonizer. Uh, those usually give me the most trouble, so I figured start there, and if we can conquer that dragon, then everything else will be easy. Except that I decided that it should have an auto-engage wah, and I'll be pulling up a script for, or actually a plugin for that, that Michael Schnell made, and uh, show you how to get it working inside LBX Stripper. Now, these kind of projects do best when there's a lot of different brains working on them. So I decided I'd use all free plugins for this video, so it should be easy for anybody just to grab this stuff and follow along and uh, try it. So first of all, I recorded a couple different types of guitar playing so that uh, we have something to test with at hand. It's a lot easier when you can just loop something uh, than grabbing your guitar, putting it down, grabbing the mouse, etc. So the first thing I did was make four tracks, uh, one for the guitar that all the guitar plugins are going to go in, uh, one for the spillover track that's going to run in parallel for the delays that'll keep running as you switch out, um, one for your MIDI input from your pedal board, and one uh, that has to be specifically named uh, underscore underscore LVX underscore CTL that uh, will handle the snapshot switching. Uh, this is an example. Some of the things that are in this script are a little bit tricky to get around, but um, that may change soon. Uh, but for now, this is one way to do it. So you're going to want to put the JS effect called LBX Fader Box on the uh, LBX Control track. And of course, arm your MIDI input. And put monitoring on and send it to your guitar track because you're going to be using it to, uh, for the wah at least. And I'm going to use a uh, plugin VST called ReControl MIDI. It, it has a logger on it so that can make it easy to tell what's going on. I'm just having a look at what's assigned to my MIDI pedal right now. The way LBX Stripper Snapshot works, um, you would give it a, a, cont a continuous control number and then give it um, incrementing values like 0, 1, 2, 3 of the same CC number, kind of like SWS Live. So that might be a little bit tricky on your uh, on your particular pedal board if you can't program it that way. But there's PIS, MIDI, VST utilities, and uh, some other ones in JS that you should be able to to remap your stuff with, uh, with these plugins. So here comes a critical part. You're going to need to MIDI learn the CC for the uh, snapshot control. And so you're going to Go to the LBX control plugin, um, click the parameter modulation, whatever button, and uh, pick fader one, and then uh, have it learn, and then just click your MIDI pedal to get it going. OK, 
Okay, now I'll pop open LBX Stripper. And uh, it follows the track, so click your guitar track there. So you start adding things on there. So I'm going to bring up the snapshot window and try and figure out how to make some uh, preliminary captures so I can so I can modify things. Sorry, this is uh, still fumbling, like I said. So I'm going to add a plug-in because I think it needs some parameters to, to save so that you can actually have snapshots. And I'm going to start here with Ignite's Emissary for the uh, distorted guitar amp. And there are so many ways to skin this cat, but um, to start with, uh, even though this is kind of a dangerous thing, um, I'm going to use the wet-dry control to bypass some individual plugins. Sometimes you can use the bypass control itself. Sometimes you can use internal parameters in the plugin to do it. But um, you never know. There might be some kind of buffer or something going on. So the wet-dry control is actually pretty safe. It's going to use more CPU, but it'll be safe, safer. So you right-click and, and uh, right-click on each snapshot, and you can capture uh, the current settings. And for right now, you know, I'm just I'm just uh, capturing four basic ones so that I can move things around and get get it going. Uh, click and drag the asterisk, and you can bring a little uh, snapshots tab. Uh, right-click it there, and you can pick which fader is controlling the snapshots. And I'm just uh, clicking through, making sure the snapshots switch. Try the MIDI pedals out, and there we go. Good. So I'm going to change the values a little bit and uh, overwrite them so I can see, like, you know, the, the clean track would have the distortion off. And uh, you can pick through a wide variety of knobs. You could download. I guess you could make your own. I, I've seen some really cool-looking setups that people have made with this thing, but... Uh, I'm just going to kind of pick a basic knob. I'd like to have one that has numbers on it and uh, just go from there. So double click the knob you want and then click the set image button. Uh, there's some more other modifiers for the buttons. We won't need them for right now. But be sure to name this, uh, this knob or button something really useful for telling what it is later. There is a show control info uh, command but uh, it doesn't tell you that much unless you really speak code or something. But uh, So try and, try and name this to something you'll be able to figure out exactly what it is later on. Okay, exit edit mode and um, start modifying this knob and, and overwriting the snapshots. For the clean sound, we want the amp's um, wet-dry knob to be all the way dry so it's effectively bypassed. And for all the distorted sounds, we want it 100% wet so that it's on. And, you know, give your snapshots some useful names. And I'm going to step through my MIDI pedal, make sure the snapshots are changing, the wet-dry controls changing, and the names are changing. And uh, let's actually listen to it and give it a try. So it looks like it's switching nice, fast, and clean, but man, not having a cabinet on there is pure pain. So I'm going to add uh, NAD IR, I think that's how you say it, uh, for another thing from Ignite. It's an impulse response loader. I'm going to give it my favorite impulse, and we're going to put the wet-dry control on this to bypass it or not. So the clean's going to be bypassed, and the rest of them are going to have the cabinet on. And like with the amp, uh, I'm going to overwrite this with it uh, totally dry for a clean and 100% wet for all the distorted sounds. And test it real quick. Okay, so now I'm going to make a spillover effects track. So I'm going to put uh, Redelay on the second track. I'm going to set it to 100% wet. And Stripper lets you uh, create sends, uh, track sends, and uh, save their values in each snapshot. So 
for the tracks that I want spillover for, for these effects for, I'm going to have the send up. And for the ones that I don't, I'm going to have the send off. And the really cool part is when you switch this, whatever delays are trailing off will still trail off even when you're on to the new sound. They just won't send it the input of the delay any longer. So now I'm going to add the send knob and I'm going to go through each track and overwrite with the send on or off depending on what track it is. So for the clean and the basic distorted track, the send's going to be off. And for the other two, I'm going to have it on. And here comes a quick test. So you should be able to hear the delay go. And um, when I switch back to the clean, you should hear the distorted delay still coming out uh, until they're done tailing off. But you'll be hearing the clean sound as the dry sound. Okay, next, what can often be the mother of all headaches, uh, the Holy Grail, a harmonizer. This is going to try and bring your computer crashing to its knees, and this may not be exactly the plugin you want to use, but it's free, and it actually does work pretty good. Uh, you'll see that it doesn't actually have a parameter exposed for changing the key, so you wouldn't really be able to snapshot for different keys with this, as far as I can tell. I mean, there's some ways around it. Um, but it's probably important to know here, uh, you might want to look at your performance meter in Reaper and make sure it's showing RT CPU time. Uh, if it goes over your buffer size, that's when you're going to have real big problems, even if it looks like you're not using much CPU. So keep an eye on that. So I'm just going to, again, add a wet-dry control with this uh, harmonizer. And I'm only going to have it wet on the harmonizer snapshot. The rest of them are all going to be set down. And so uh, let's overwrite all the snapshots again and uh, give it a try. Okay, now it's time to add the wah. Uh, eventually we're going to want this auto-engage, but for now we're just going to get a wah. And you're going to run into some problems with some plugins doing this. Um, for instance, Bias FX uh, and any other uh, revolver does this too, where the wah on off is actually a toggle. So sometimes you might have it on and you switch something, it'll turn it off. And then next time you switch something, it'll automatically turn it on accidentally. Uh, so you really want a wah that can be set off or on, not just flipping back and forth. Uh, for this one, I'm going to use a stock JS Reaper wah, and uh, let's try it out. I'm going to assign it to CC27. Okay, here's where things get really frustrating. Um, it's probably better not to learn the wah control, but to actually assign it as a parameter and parameter modulation, assign it to whatever MIDI you want. You might have to scale it, you might have to flip it, invert it. Um, there's a trouble with the current version of LBX Stripper where it may not, when MIDI's involved, it can keep the snapshots from actually loading the values that you expect them to. Um, what we're going to do for the auto-engage is use a, an auto-engage plugin that Michael Schnell made, um, MIDI auto-engage. And what it does is it takes the incoming CC, in my case 27, and at certain values it'll send another CC out, in this case 28, and I'm going to use 28 to turn on and off the wah. Some plugins will let you turn them on and off directly, um, but in this case we're going to use the... Uh, Again, the wet dry control since it's just it's the wah by itself. But if it's like the wah inside, like bias effects, um, 
you would want to send CC to that particular on off switch. But again, like bias effects has a toggle, not an on off. So this gets a little bit tricky and uh, actually had to go do some digging in the forum and uh, checking some of my other scripts to get this working right. So this was actually a pretty unfun part and uh, I'm, I'm working with the developer. Hopefully we can get this sorted out, but I'm going to show you how I was able to get it to work. So the trick for now that I was able to come up with is, um, actually you won't have to do this in Overloud's TH3, it's Wah has an auto engage, but uh, for most of these, I'm um, gonna set the, um, the Wah wet dry uh, to CC28. And I'm actually not gonna save a snapshot of the wet dry control, because that doesn't work here. I'm gonna use a uh, plugin I think LBX made as well called uh, MIDI CC sliders. And I'm going to have it set CC27, which is normally my wah pedal, to zero uh, when the snapshot loads up. And I'm going to do that by um, putting on a switch or slider that um, sends the uh, parameter called send all CCs as the snapshot loads. And that will send uh, CC27 to zero, and which will cause the MIDI auto engage to send a CC28 to zero. And so when you switch to your new snapshot, the wash should be off. There might be situations where you want it to stay on, but this is for in case you want it to be off. And you absolutely have to make sure that uh, MIDI CC sliders is in the signal chain before a MIDI auto engage. Otherwise, it's not going to work. And beautiful, watch that wet dry control flip back to zero every time I switch presets here. So we got a working auto engage. Yay. So I'm going to put a link up in the description of, uh, hopefully, to the RPP up to this point, and you can modify it from here. But uh, now I'm going to show you uh, my personal one. It's got some paid plugins and stuff, but it just shows a little bit more complex of uh, what this thing can do. And uh, you can make it a whole lot prettier than this, too, but I, I just wanted it to work. So for this one, I have... Uh, tap tempo on one MIDI pedal and uh, tuner mute on another and uh, just some more complex switching going on for a, a much uh, clean sound that I'm much happier with. <laughs> So I hope this helped you out, and I hope you try this out. Uh, like I say, the more people messing with this thing, the better it's going to get faster. And if you really found this useful and you want to help with the development, um, you know, just be sure, like they say, to rate, comment, and subscribe. But especially comment. <laughs>